The mathematics that govern the discharging of a capacitor are a very simple first order differential, one of the simplest dynamical systems that you could put together. So let's draw the circuit out. We have a capacitor and we have a resistor and we're gonna label this as the ground. And we're gonna give the capacitor an initial voltage V. And we're gonna say, well, actually we'll just label this as Z. We'll label, uh, Z, we'll label this as R and we'll say that the initial voltage uh, of the capacitor at time zero is going to equal V naught. So what we did is before we built this circuit, before we wired it all together, we set an initial charge. We charged up the capacitor using some battery or other voltage source, and we charged it up to V naught volts. And now we're going to look at what happens to this capacitor and the voltage of this circuit and the current of the circuit as it is connected to the resistor and starts to discharge. Because when a resistor sees a voltage applied to it, that will cause current flow. So current will flow this way and we will get some current I. Now this will vary over time. It's not going to be a static voltage. It will be a changing voltage because unlike a voltage source, which can provide a constant voltage no matter what, a capacitor does not provide a constant voltage. It has a static voltage to begin with at time zero, but then as the current is leaving, as the charge is leaving, as the electrons flow out of the capacitor, it loses that charge. And so the equations that govern this are relatively straightforward and they were covered in the prior videos. We know that the relationship between V and let's make sure this capacitor has capacity has capacitance C. The relationship here between voltage and capacitance and charge is and current is C V dot is equal to I. And then we also know here that V, the same V, because again, this is a node that is common, and this is a node that's common, and this is ground over here. This bottom terminal is ground. So we're gonna label that as zero voltage. And this point here, is the voltage V across the capacitor. It's also the voltage across the resistor and it's the same node. And so whatever V we're writing here is true here as well. This is also the same for I. There's only one I, there's only one current in this system at any given time. There's no other place for the current to flow. It can only flow in this one way. And therefore whatever I we write is the same. So we then also know that V is equal to I R. Now I've written these I's as unsigned right now, but it's a little more complicated than that because there's actually some sign to this. Remember, Kir Kir Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's current law states that um, at any node, and here's one node, the current flowing into it and the current flowing out of it must be the same. Similarly, the net current flow around a node must equal zero. And even though we know that there's only one I, the signs here are important. So let's break this down between I of capacitor and I of resistor just for the moment. And even though we know they're the same, let's just think about it for a moment. Because of Kirchhoff's current law, we know that I of C plus I of R is equal 
to zero, which means that I of C and I of R are the same in terms of magnitude, but they have opposite sign because they sum to zero. And so these I's in this context are not exactly the same I, but one is negative than the other. One is the, one is the, one is negative than the other. It doesn't matter which one because it's mostly irrelevant. It's just the sign of convention. And all these are relative to whatever you decide zero is going to be. But let's just say that for the purposes of this positive flow, because this is the positive uh, component, right? The positive voltage is here. Current flows in the positive direction. It actually turns out that that's meaningless because really what's happening is that electrons flow from the negative terminal. But we talk about current as if it's the thing that flows from the positive terminal. Okay. So we've got I of C plus I of R is equal to zero. And that means if this is I of C and this is I of R, then we can solve for these two and plug them into the equation. And we've already done that for this. So this is I of C is just C dot V or C V dot, sorry, plus I of R and that's V over R, V over R is equal to zero. Well, now we just have to put this into a form that we can make sense of. And that gives us V dot is equal to negative V over RC by moving this over here, dividing by R, or dividing by C. And now we have our first order homogeneous differential equation. And you can solve this relatively easily, right? It's equal to something like V is equal to some constant times E to the negative T over RC. And this is the solution with some constant C1 that we haven't yet solved for to this first order differential equation. But we know the initial conditions. And what this means is that if we plug in T of zero and make this go to one, then V must equal C1. So that's V not in there. The final equation that describes this from an analytical perspective is that V of T is equal to V naught E to the negative T over RC. And this RC term here is very important because if you'll notice, whatever RC equals, when time is equal to RC, you get V naught E to the negative one. And so this RC here represents the time constant. of this particular circuit that we're talking about, of this, of this capacitor resistor circuit, this RC circuit. This is called an RC circuit. And this has very important properties because you actually can look at the RC value and get a very good intuition as to how quickly the capacitor is going to discharge. In multiples of RC, the capacitor is going to lose charge. After five RCs, the capacitor is basically empty because what is E to the negative five? It's something that's gonna take your number and get it very, very close to zero. So whatever this is, it's gonna leave a very small fraction of it left. It's not going to be zero, right? This equation has no has no, doesn't ever get to zero unless you go to infinity. But for all intents and purposes, the vast majority of the charge of the capacitor will be gone by around five RCs. And so understanding what this RC term is, and it's actually an expression in seconds. If you multiply, um, the, the, this RC is, is, can, be, can be thought of as, as uh, a value that represents seconds of time before the, before the curve de decays, right? At the actual, if you were to plot this, time versus velocity, then you'd get a curve that looks something like this because it's just an exponential decay. Similarly, you can do the same thing and now solve for i because we know, no, we know the equation for i, right? If we know the equation for v, then we know the equation for i, and we can plug that in. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. And we can put that equation V of T 
into this equation simply, pretty simply here, and we end up with an expression that says I of T or I of R of T is equal to V naught E to the negative T over RC divided by R. And so just as the voltage is decaying over time, so is the current. The current is also falling just in a different, just now in proportion to R because again, V equals IR. And that makes sense, right? Because initially if the capacitor is charged a lot and has a high voltage, then for a fixed resistance, you're gonna get more current flow through it. But as the potential here, as the voltage decreases, then the current is going to decrease as well. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And that's why these two equations look very similar. 